Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be really focusing on layering my ink blending to create a unique look. I will be featuring products from the all to new April 2024 release. This video is part of a video hop, so be sure to check below in the video description for the next link to the next video and also how you can enter in the giveaway. So first I want to show you some of the products that I picked out and was excited to work with. This is the Celebrate Sentiments press plate. This is meant to be used with either your better press system or using with your Glimmer Hot Foil machine. Next we have the Timeless Sentiments 2. Absolutely love these. These are perfectly sized for the front of your cards. Great bold greetings along with a shadow layer. Next, I have the Pink Star Tulip. Now, this is a die set, and I'll be honest, I don't normally reach for dies, but I do think that this keyhole system that Altenew has is absolutely genius, and it makes it so easy to layer these dies together. Plus, this particular die set is absolutely gorgeous. And one thing, or another thing I should say that I really appreciate is how Altenew creates these layering guides. So it shows you exactly step-by-step -step how to put that flower together. Then I have another press plate. So this is the Baroque Elegance press plate meant with the better press system or using with your Glimmer Hot Foil machine. I also have this sparkled frame. I didn't end up using it in my project today, but I am definitely going to be putting this on the top of my pile for more cards in the future. Then there is the Floral Radiance stencil. You guys know, or maybe you don't know, that I absolutely love my layering stencils. This also has a guide to show you how it is going to look once it is all layered up. And this one really piqued my interest. So this is the Dynamic Duo in Modern Dahlia Bunch. This one comes as a bundle. I believe you can purchase some of these separately, but I love the bundle option. There is a stamp set, a coordinating die, and then you have your stencil, which is really just a two-piece stencil, but super easy to figure out how the layers go. And I'll explain that one as I get further into it. And once again, it has a guide there to show you how to use it. And it gives you the idea what you can do with that stamp set. So you can see it kind of adds some additional elements and uh, kind of some, what do we call it, foliage around your element. Altenew is also releasing some new Glimmer foils, so this is meant to be used with the Glimmer Hot Foil system. I didn't end up doing any foiling today, but these are in Silver, Fuchsia, and Mirror Gold. Then I have the Micro Blending Brushes. I am a super fan of blending. I use the Altenew blending brushes all the time, and you're going to see them throughout this video. I definitely believe that every size blending brush has a specific purpose. These come in two different sizes. There is two of them that is a size, I believe it is a 10 and a 7. So the 10 is the larger one, 7 is the smaller one. And one thing I really, really love about the brushes is how short the bristles are. I find that with the short bristles like that, you really have a lot of control over your blending. And finally, we have some new sticky mats. Now, I will be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the purpose of was this. These are sticky mats that are meant to go in your stamp wheel. So there is a protective sheet on there. There's a black and a white version with those grids. I think what these are meant for is to put in your stamp wheel so you would remove your cover plate, you'd remove that sticky mat, and then those new grid sticky mats is going to go at the bottom. Just pick one of them. And I believe it is meant to hold your card stack down so you can use a red rubber stamp in your stamp wheel. I think I heard that's what it's used for. I'm actually going to use it for another purpose that I'll show you later on in the video. And you can see when I put that white sticky mat down, I can actually see the black grid lines pretty well through that sticky mat. So I'm going to utilize that today. We have three new collections of ink. There is Pocket of Sunshine, Green Valley, and Enchanted Garden. So I am going to swatch these out really quick for you so you can see what the colors look like. There is Citrus Burst, Fresh Lemon, and Maple Yellow, and then Honey Drizzle. For some reason, I am always drawn to the honey because I just love that warm color of yellow. So this is where I'm just taking the ink pads and swatching them out. The first color looks a little off, mainly just because of my camera. But you can see these are great yellows to be layering if you want to create a really warm, kind of sunshiny color of flower. Then this is the Green Valley Collection. So the first color was Firefly. 
Then I have Grassfield, Shadow Creek, and Mountain Pine. I will be using this color set today. Then the last group of colors that's being released is Enchanted Garden. Now I only have three of the colors. Um, one of them was sent in mistake, so I need to get the other one. But here we have Wisteria. Then actually I believe I skipped to Ultraviolet and then Andromeda. I think I'm missing Hydrangea. Now I can jump into the card making. So I do have three cards that I'm going to be creating. Some of the video is going to be spent up because I do a lot of ink blending in it, but I really wanted to show you how I'm going to be layering my blending. Now I'm starting off with the pink star tulip die set. I was really, really drawn to this style of flower. And of course, like I said, they have the, on the back of the packaging, how you layer everything up. And I keep that handy. Now I did go ahead off screen and I die cut out some of the leaves. This is what the leaves look like. And I got a funny little story about those leaves later on. So I have those die cut out of white cardstock and I also went ahead and die cut out all of my petals. Now what I'm gonna start doing is separating these. So you're gonna see where we have some of the edge of the petals, that's the smaller areas. And then we have the larger petals. And I will be showing you up close when you die cut it out, it not only cuts that keyhole, but it's going to kind of embed a number on there. So number one, that is your first layer. And I believe for this flower, it goes up to five. I totally appreciate that because I do struggle layering up my die sets sometimes. So to have it numbered like that really does help. I'm gonna start by ink blending my leaves. So I really, instead of starting with a light green, I am going to be starting with a light yellow and I am using a small blending brush to do this. This light yellow is going to kind of give it, I want to say a glow to the leaves. I believe the yellow I used is a citrus burst. So it's the lightest color out of that new set that is being released. And I am using the sticky mat from the stamp wheel to hold my cardstock pieces in place so that they don't move around when I'm blending over the top. Now that was just a really quick, I wanna say brushing of the yellow over it. I didn't go very specific, so I'm okay if it's scattered. And now I'm gonna come through and do the greens. Now for this one, I am going to be using some mini blending brushes. Now these are, I guess, kind of like a pencil, maybe, well, thicker than a pencil, but these are some of my favorites because they just fit in the hand really well. And like I said earlier, they have short bristles, so it's very easy to control where I'm applying my ink. Now this is part of the layering blending that I was mentioning earlier. I started with the yellow, and then I started going through the greens and that yellow just set that base tone for me and it gives it almost a glow in the background. I did work my way through the new greens that are released. You don't necessarily have to start or you don't have to use all of the greens. I was really just kind of experimenting. And then I do go around the very, very edge using the darkest green, which is going to be, I either went with Shadow Creek or Mountain Pine. I kind of get in a zone when I'm blending and I forget to grab or figure out which color I used. Then to remove them off of the sticky mat, I like to use either a palette knife or my tweezers to just pick them up. And I'm gonna wipe this clean just with some water and a towel and make sure that it's dry before I bring my flowers in here. So these are the flowers that all have the keyhole. This is using that pink star tulip, again, out of white cardstock. And once again, I am starting out with that citrus burst. So starting out with that yellow. Now my plan for this was to have a very warm colored flower. So that is where I added the yellow. I kind of faded off into the white as I got towards the edges. Now I'm bringing in one of my ultimate favorite colors, which is coral berry. I always start in the center and then blend my way out towards the edge. I don't want to completely consume um, my yellow. I really wanted that warm feeling to be left into my flowers. And as I'm blending that coral berry with the yellow, it's creating this very nice orange. So I don't know if there's an orange like this in the Alt New line. I feel like sometimes when you're layering your ink blending, you're almost creating your own colors. Now I'm also adding that light yellow to those small pieces, which again, I put on the sticky mat to hold those in place. And this is where those micro blending brushes really come in handy because I still want to keep that yellow, but I do want to add a little bit of that coral berry. So by using these micro ink blending brushes, I can really hone in on just the very edges. Once all of my blending is done, then I can start assembly. 
I am bringing in the back of the packaging because I am going to follow that step by step. So I started out with my base piece that has the number one die cut into it. And then just looking at that packaging and figuring out where these edge pieces kind of layer up. And it really was pretty easy to figure out. It's kind of like a maybe beginning lever, beginning level puzzle is what I would call it. So I just kind of went through then I put layer two on, matching up that keyhole, which again is just genius. I'm only putting the liquid glue in the center because I, I wasn't sure where all my petals were going to land. And really just by putting it in the center is going to be enough adhesive. It's going to hold everything together really well. My tweezers come in super handy for this. If you're familiar with me and my channel, you know that I do not craft without my tweezers. And they just help me with some of those really fine areas where I can flip it over, add the glue, and then keep my hands out of the way so I can see exactly where I'm placing these pieces. Now, the final piece is going to cover that keyhole so nobody else is going to know our secret and how we crafted this flower. Off screen, I did do another flower and that one was mainly using that set that has the coral berry in it. I had the, I think I did maybe three shades of pink out of that set to create more of a pink flower. Now I'm setting those off on the side and I am going to work on the stencil. This is the floral radiance. And I apologize if I feel like I'm kind of jumping around. I kind of go through and make my projects and then figure out what matches up with what and what I'm going to put together. So here I wanted to create this stencil background and see what comes out of it. So I did take that sticky mat that has the grid on it. I placed it underneath and I left that protective cover on it. And then I placed my sticky grid surface in there. So the sticky grid surface is holding my stencil in place. I maybe didn't even need that extra mat, but I like the black outlines underneath. So that's main sticky mat, <laughs> there's too many sticky mats, is holding my stencil in place while I added the first layer. And I did that in frosty pink. Then I lined up the images and this is going to add some detail to our flowers. This one I did in coral berry and I am going to be using the, I think this is the large blending brush. I get my sizes messed up, but this is kind of more of the larger one where it's got a handle on it that I can hold on to. And I like that for bigger surfaces. So now on number three, what I was showing you there is there are etched lines on the stencil to, sh to help you line this up correctly over your image. Here I'm bringing in some of those new greens. I am using, I believe this is the firefly. I'm gonna go over all of the leaves, but I'm going to step up the leaves a little bit by bringing in a smaller blending brush and adding some of that darker shade. So I think this one may be Grassy Field or Shadow Creek and just adding that darker color uh, more towards the bottom of the leaf, I guess where it would be closest to the flowers. And I'm really trying to be careful because we have openings in here for the center of our flowers. So I don't wanna get green in there. I did come in with, I think this was Caramel, maybe Caramel Delight. I can't remember the name, but it has Caramel in it. So I really liked kind of that. No, this one was honey. This was the honey drizzle. Sorry about that. Honey drizzle was the first layer of the centers. This last layer of the stencil is adding details to the leaves, which I came in with mountain pine and the micro blending brush. And then the center of the flower is going to be that caramel. So I did go for more of a deeper shade of honey for this. I get asked a lot of questions about what colors I use in my blending, and I'm trying to at least show you. I may not remember everything or how it went together, but at least you can see it, and so that way that'll give you a better idea. Now, also on this last layer of the stencil are these little dots, and I brought in Dewdrop with the micro blending brush, so that really came in handy. If I were to redo this, I probably would have started with that light blue first, then the yellow for the center of the flowers, and then that dark green. It's, it's best to start light first and then go into your dark. All right, so there is that background. So I am gonna set that off on the side and I'm gonna work on some more flowers. Now this is the Dynamic Duo, the Modern Dahlia Bunch, and I thought this was just very intriguing. It was a very different style of flower than what I would normally do. So I really wanted to play around this one. It also does not have a stamped outline, which is another thing that kind of drew me to it. Now with this, we only have two stencils and on those stencils, they are labeled A1 
and A2. And each one is like that. There's B1 and B2 and then C1 and C2, I believe. So you only have two layers for each flower. Now, again, I'm using my sticky mats. I did go ahead and die cut out using the coordinating die. And I just thought that would be easier to line everything up. So I placed the die cut on the sticky mat, lined up A1, and then I came in. I think I might have started with the frosty pink or the coral berry and then brought in a little bit of that citrus burst. I might have even jumped to a fresh lemon. I'm going to go through and do all the light layers of colors first. So the second flower here is going to be B1. I came in with that yellow on the outer edges. And then in the center, working my way out, I'm coming in with the pink. Once again, it's going to transition into that really nice orange. Again, here for the third flower, I did this is the C1, so it is the first layer of the flower. Just on these first layers, it creates an amazing design. Then I shifted my stencils, and I'm going back to the second layer for each one. So this is A2, and I'm coming in a little heavier handed with my coral berry and also that yellow. Now on this second flower, I decided to skip the yellow and just go more heavy handed with my coral berry. You're gonna see coral berry is like one of my ultimate go-to colors when it comes to alt new. I wasn't sure at first if I wanted to add the yellow, but once I peeled up the stencil to see that, I really liked how that was, and I still have a transition into orange. But here's where I get a little bit risky, and I'm bringing in one of the purples. I think I jumped into, this might've been oh, ultraviolet, um, I have to look at my list. I think this was the ultraviolet. So I had to tap off quite a bit and I added that just over the pink areas because I didn't want the purple in the yellow. And then the final area was the centers, which I did with jet black. So layering those inks together created such a fun look. Now I'm going to jump in and do some letter press. So these are the plates that I'll be using and I'm starting out with the sentiments. I know there's a few different techniques that people have probably done without using the better press letter press system. I am just going to be using this. I have it. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my better press. I placed my sentiments inside of that A2 size grid that is on that. Oh, I forget the actual words. I'm going to just call it my platform. And then I'm taking some of the paper from Spellbinders that is cut to A2 and I taped the corners down onto that clear uh, clear surface. I can't remember the name for that either. And then once I inked up my sentiments with the jet black ink, I'm going to flip my plate over so that the magnetic pieces grip it. And then I'm going to run this through my platinum six die cut machine. So as I'm running this through, the machine is providing pressure and pushing the cardstock down into the plate to give me this letterpress look. These results came out amazing. And when you rub your finger over it, it, you really can feel the texture and the impression that that plate is leaving on the cardstock. This one is the Baroque Elegance press plate that I'm going to ink up with the Altenew jet, uh, jet Black ink. Spellbinders also has a black archival ink uh, formulation that they recommend, but I do find the Jet Black ink provides amazing results. So I, again, ran that through the machine and this, this was the first pass. I only needed one pass. There was one area that was a little bit lighter than others, but I figured it would still work out really well. Now I cleaned this off really, really good. I inked this up for another cardstock background with frosty pink. My mistake, if I'm going to do this, I should have started with the light pink first because I did leave a little bit of black in there. I still think it came out as a really great background, so I am saving that. But I took another piece of that cardstock, ran it through again, and this is the second impression. So I guess you could say second generation. And it not only it left me that embossed impression, but I do have little hints of the pink and black in there. And I really liked that. So both of these backgrounds are great. So off screen, I went ahead and put my cards together. This is the one where I used the pink star tulip. And the funny story is I was FaceTiming with a friend when I was finishing my cards and completely forgot to add the leaves, but I actually really like it without the leaves. All I did was add a little bit of ink blending using Dewdrop ink, black splatters, and finished it off with the sentiment, celebrate sentiments. 
This card is featuring the Dynamic Duo Modern Dahlia Bunch. This one, I am using one of those backgrounds I created with the Baroque Elegance press plate, kind of that second generation pressing, I guess I would say. I added some metallic splatters to the background and one of the Celebrate Sentiments press plate. And then my last card that I finished off was that Floral Radiance background. And this one, I simply added a sentiment to from the Timeless Sentiments 2 die set. So those are my finished projects. I hope this gives you a little peek into how I like to do my layered ink blending when it comes to these stencils and it gives you some inspiration. Again, this is part of a video hop. I'm gonna have the next person linked down below in my video description. There's also going to be a full product supply list down below there too and on my blog. So thank you all so much for stopping by today and I hope to see you again soon.